next video shows you how to program the Holiday Coil Tiny Pix controller. Now, down here we have a Tiny Pix controller. It has already had the data connection and the pixels and the power hooked up, and you can see that it is uh, activated and working. Now, that was shown in another video, so if you've not already done that, you will need to go ahead and do that. Now, the first step is to go ahead and plug in your USB adapter. Now, we're going to go ahead and see that this is already configured. I'm just going to go ahead and unplug it, and you'll see it disappears, and I will plug it back in, and you will see that it appears under COMLPT USB serial port. So, the programmer cable needs to be installed and working uh, before you can launch the application. Now, see our instructions uh, that, included, that were included with your Pixel controller for how to install the drivers if necessary. Now, the next thing you'll need to do once you've got the programmer cable hooked up is you'll need to open up the downloaded software. When you download the software, you'll see that it's in a zip file called hc-611-pixelprogrammer.zip. Now this will always contain the newest version, so it may prompt you in the future if you update to a different version of the Pixel controller or firmware to download the updated version. Just simply follow the instructions that are contained within the written instructions for downloading, uh, or go to our website and look in your account for that order and you can find the Pixel Programmer software. Now, once you've done that, you're going to go ahead and open up the zip file, and you can see the zip file here. And I'm just going to go ahead and create a folder and call it TinyPix on my desktop. This does not install. Uh, it's simply just an application. We'll drag it in here. And in here, we now have the application. All right, we're going to go ahead and run the TinyPix application. You can see the first tab just simply shows you how to wire it up, and that was set up in the prior video. So we go to step two. Step two, uh, you can see down here that it has already shown that we have opened up the Tiny Pix. It showed us what version is the driver for this particular programmer. Uh, it has gone ahead and pulled down the firmware version and confirmed that it is reading. Now, if you get any other kinds of errors, they will show up down here. So look for them down here. The newest errors are towards the bottom or just informational data. Okay, click read. Now, what will happen is, is you will see all the settings that are currently in the controller. And if you want to see what those are, just simply copy them. This will copy the settings from the read column over to the write column. Now, you can go through and set each one of these. Now, there are assistance on the tooltips for each one of these items. So if you're not sure what they mean, go ahead and just hover over them. We're going to talk about them briefly. First is the DMX start address. The first pixel in the string will have a DMX start address, and that will be this address. So they will go normally sequentially, depending upon some options we'll talk about down here. So it's one, two, three, and then the next one would be four, five, six. Now it supports up to 170 pixels. That is 512 DMX channels. So here we're going to select exactly how many pixels we have installed. And so for this case, we have 20. And you can see that the total number of DMX channels is now showing that we're using 60. Next is the pixel type. You'll need to select the appropriate pixel type. Now in this particular case, we have 2801, and you'll need to select 4-wire 2801 for this one. It comes default 2811, which is a common protocol. Next is the type of pixel level control you want. Now, you can control each individual pixel, or if you just want to go ahead, purchase pixel-related hardware, but only want to sequence this as a single three-channel controller, you can do that. This is often called macro mode. Uh, this will simply make all of the entire pixels in the string that are connected act as three channels, red, green, blue. We're going to go ahead and say individual pixel mode. Now. Here we have reverse addressing is defaulted to no. Reverse addressing would mean that if we had 10 pixels connected, that would mean that the last pixels would be 28, 29, and 30. If we had the first pixel at the very end of the string physically connected to the controller would be one, two, three. So this just allows you more flexibility in your addressing so that you can either make the first address, this address right here, 
up here at the top with your BMX start address, or you can make it the ladder. Most commonly, it's not reversed. Now, this is the order of the pixels in the actual output. Now, you'll need to determine that either from your vendor, your vendor should normally or may not, uh, list the physical order. Now, you would assume them to be red, green, blue for the order. For example, channels one, two, three would be red, green, blue. That is not always the case. It is not uncommon for them to be in other orders physically, and that just depends upon how the manufacturer produced the wiring to each one of the colors. Now, you want to go ahead and select the appropriate color for that particular pixel. Now, why this matters is, is that we have some other options down here in the demo mode. And for example, if you selected red and you got a different color than red, you'll know that this order is wrong. Or if you go into your sequencing application and things aren't coming out correct, a different color is coming out, you'll need to adjust this. All right. Now, next we're going to have null or ghost pixels. This means that you can tell the controller if the controller is located in one place and it's a little bit long distance from the controller to the first pixel. And now the distance from the controller to the first pixel varies by the type of pixel. It can be as little as 10 feet and it could be as much as 25 feet. It all depends on your pixel, the manufacturer, the type of chip, and a variety of other issues. So if you discover that you can't properly control your pixels, you may need to put in null or ghost pixels. And basically all this means is that the first, second, third, or however many you choose here, pixels will not actually be considered. They'll only be used for the repeating of data. They won't be considered for addressing. So, normally if you've got the pixels and they're hooked right up to the controller and you're a very short distance from the controller to the pixels, you won't use that. Now here we have a demo mode. The default is red, green, blue. Um, we find that useful for testing your lights to make sure that they're all working as expected and it slowly goes through red, green, blue. Uh, you can choose off. So if your controller is not receiving a BMX signal, it will not display any sequence. And you can see that there are a variety of other built-in sequences that allow you to use in off-season or other type uses. Now, the demo speed adjusts how fast. So for example, if we had red, green, blue alternating, if we selected zero, this would be very fast. If we selected seven, it would change very slowly between them. Okay, the default here is Tor. Now, RGB mapping. Now, if I up here have the pixel color order as green, red, blue, that means when I address the pixels, they would normally be Channel 1 would be green, channel 2 would be red, and channel 3 would be blue. But much, many software applications don't like that order. They assume that you have red, green, blue. And this particular setting says simply, if I have something other than red, green, blue, or even if you have red, green, blue, always make it appear that the first channel is red, the second channel is green, and the third channel is blue. Okay. Now, once we've got all of our settings set, we're going to go ahead and write those settings. You can see that the light changes on here. It's flashing rapidly. And we can see now that the pixels are going through their built-in sequence now that they've received the appropriate setting. And if we look through the log here, you can see that it sends the information and it tells you if there is any errors and it was not able to write. So, you then can read the values again if you need to. If you have a controller you're not sure of, and there are the values, and you can copy them over. And that's all there is to programming the Holiday Coro Tiny Picks controller. And if you should have any questions, feel free to contact us on our website.